Good morning. Did I ever tell you about the time I was dog bit twice in one week for Jesus? Actually happened. I don't suppose there are very many people who can make that claim. But uh, I was uh, I was youth pastoring and uh, one of the young ladies in my youth ministry, <clears throat> just a wonderful friend, kid, you know, loved Jesus. Um, she was only 13 years old and she had leukemia. Not a good diagnosis. Her name is Ashley. And uh, I've been back and forth to Children's Hospital in St. Louis visiting with Ashley for months as she received treatments and and uh, as that leukemia beat up her body and and uh, it, it damaged her body, but it never damaged her spirit. Never, not for a minute. Da Ashley was an amazing young woman who loved to bring other kids to church with her and uh, probably one of the top two teenage evangelists in youth ministry that I've ever known. And uh, Ashley is with Jesus now. But uh, I, I went to visit her one day at her home and uh, it was a beautiful day and I decided to ride my motorcycle. So I climbed on and I rode out to her house and um, there was no one else there, just Ashley. Our parents were at work, brothers were out someplace, I don't know. And she and I sat on the couch in the living room probably for a half hour or so. and just talked and and uh, laughed and and uh, prayed. And uh, then I left. And uh, I remember going outside and just thinking about what this young lady was going through and uh, her faithfulness at such a crazy young age. Um, Ashley fought leukemia three times. Um, that was her first time when she was 13. And uh, she finally beat it the third time as, as a 23-year-old young woman, but died due to the cure. The, the cure killed her. Um, so like I said, she's with Jesus right now. But I walked out of her house uh, just reflecting on, on her life. And I went and I got back on my motorcycle, turned it on, put my helmet on, and, and her, her dog walked out to me. And his name is Brownie. He's a big chocolate lab, just a sweetheart of a dog. And um, I kicked a bike in gear spun it around in the driveway. They had a long driveway. They lived kind of out in the country in this beautiful home with a lake out in front. And, and I took off and I'm going down their driveway and, and Brownie is running next to me, barking at me. I'm worried it was Brownie. I mean, I'd, I'd just been petting her in the house with Ashley. And all of a sudden Brownie just swerved into me and bit me on the calf, like on the, the shin, um, as, I was, as I was riding. And I kind of kicked her away and uh, got out on the street and she had given up and gone back home. And I stopped and rolled up the jeans, my jeans leg, and I was bleeding. Um, she sunk her teeth in really well. And I remember just wiping it off as best I could and riding it home and bandaging it up and going about life. I still have scars there. And I made sure that Ashley knew that I, <clears throat> that I shed blood on her behalf. Later that week, I'd gone to the home of another sick person, this time a, a senior citizen that I didn't even know. But um, <clears throat> our church office had been asked to have a pastor come by and pray with the family. And uh, I was asked to do that. And so I went and um, knocked on the door. And uh, the wife came to the door. Uh, very nice woman, probably in her late 60s. And we talked and she said, I, I really can't take you back to my husband's bedroom right now. He was he was clearly dying and we knew that. I can't take you back there right now. He's asleep and he had a hard time getting to sleep and he needs to stay asleep. I said, not a problem. Let's just pray here. So I reached out, took her hands and together we closed our eyes and we prayed for her husband and for her right there in their living room. And as I'm praying, they had a little yip yip dog and the dog just suddenly kind of lost control and ran at me. I didn't see it coming. My eyes were closed. I'm praying. But I was wearing tennis shoes and the dog bit through my toe into my toes. And um, and I'm praying and being bit all at the same time. And I didn't want to stop praying. I didn't know these people. And I just, I just really wanted to bring them to Jesus. So as I'm praying for this man, I'm shaking my foot, trying to lose the dog. I finally 
shook the dog off and um, got to the point of saying amen. She never knew. She never noticed. I remember walking out to the car and looking down and, and the foot, the toe of my tennis shoe was, was shredded and I had a bloody toe. So I was dog bit for Jesus twice in one week. Sometimes when you're trying to comfort people, you have to pay a price. It's worth it. And I remember another time I went to visit a, a gentleman in the hospital that um, did go to my church. And uh, I, I don't recall what he was in for, but I went in and, and I prayed with him. And, and as I was preparing to pray with him, I, I, I just kind of leaned over and placed a hand on his shoulder. And we began praying. And as we did, I reached out and, and took my other right hand and just patted his knee. And as I did, the crease where his knee was just fell through. There was, there was no knee, there was no leg. And I remember kind of stuttering in prayer and hearing him start laughing as I'm praying. I finished that prayer quickly and he was just crying. He was laughing so hard. I didn't know he, he had a fake leg. I knew that he walked with a limp, but nobody had ever told me that this gentleman had no right leg. And he was just ecstatic that I had reached out and patted it only to have that crease where his leg would have been fall straight through to the mattress. Sometimes you suffer a little bit when you're bringing encouragement to other people. It doesn't always go the way you think it's going to go, but it's always worth it to encourage people. I'm looking at a scripture here this morning that I think fits <clears throat> our role today in the great pandemic of 2020 because we're looking for ways to go beyond our anxiety and our fear and to serve and to love other people and to be God's agent, his ambassador, ambassadors for Christ, as the scripture says, uh, in this time and in this place. So, 2 Corinthians, first chapter, the third and fourth verses say this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Do you see the circle there? When you are suffering affliction of any sort, God shows up, you're his child and he loves you and he shows up and he comforts you. I mean, can you honestly say that during this time of this pandemic that God has never shown up, has never comforted you through his word or as we, as we speak of his word and sing together online on Sundays or maybe through one of these devotionals or through sharing with another person in your life, can you honestly say God's never brought a measure of peace to your heart? I'm thinking he has. He certainly has with me. And one of the reasons he does that is he wants us to take the comfort with which we've been comforted in our afflictions, and he wants us to turn around and comfort others in their affliction with the comfort he gave us. There's our job, friends. There's why we're in the middle of this. I have a friend who says, I believe that every time a lost person gets cancer, a believer gets cancer in order to show them how to do it. I'm not sure that's theologically sound, but I get the point and I love the point and I agree with it. God allows us to walk through what the world's walking through so we can show them how to do it. Part of your job right now during COVID-19 in 2020 is to get through this with the faith and the resilience of knowing Jesus so that you can show others how to do it. There's your job. I've been kind of saying that in different ways over these last few videos that we've done, but I want you to hear it closely. Your job and your calling right now is found here in First, Second Corinthians chapter 1. Listen to it again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and God of all comfort. Here it is. Who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 
You take the medicine God has given you, the comfort of Christ. He's given it to you. Now pour it on somebody else. Love somebody else loudly and well today in Jesus' name. I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll pay attention to that scripture. I hope you won't sit today frozen in fear, locked up in anxiety, when the whole purpose that God has, has for us in this time and in this situation is to love others with the same love he's given us. Go do that. I'm going to do my best today to be looking for people to do that with. I promise you that's so. You know, I'm just close with this story. I love stories, if you can't tell. A couple of weeks ago, I was running into a gas station down the road from my house, Casey's, and I had filled my car up, and I went inside, had the mask on, the whole nine yards. There was no other cars around, so I knew it would just be the cashier, and I saw him through the window, and I knew who the guy was. And I went in, grabbed what I wanted, and as I'm paying for it, I said, how you doing? See, this guy is, is probably about 45, 50 years old, and he's physically, uh, you know, he's a big built guy. He's not fat, but he's big built, but he's also not well. He's, he's on um, dialysis several times a week. I don't know what his core issue is, but we've talked about that, and I've prayed with him across at the cash register about that before. And as I talked to him, I, you know, how you doing? How's this affecting your health right now, all that's going on? It occurred to me he didn't have a mask, and I asked him about that. And he said, yeah, I don't have one. I need one. So I went home, and I told Debbie, who immediately went downstairs. The guy's a big Cardinal fan. He went downstairs, and she made him a red mask. Yes, friends, I try to bless Cardinal fans. And I took it back to him just a few minutes later and gave that to him. He was, he was speechless. I mean, it was such a simple thing to do. And I didn't even do it. I was just the delivery boy. But my wife made him a mask. Just about every time I see him now, he's wearing that. We were able in some way to comfort him in his affliction with the same comfort that we've been comforted with. You know, he he's aware that I'm a pastor, but you don't have to be to serve somebody. But I want him to know Jesus. And he knows I want him to know Jesus. And we're going to get to talk about that more because of that mask and because of what's going on in his life. Guys, serve someone today. Love somebody well today and let them know you've been comforted in the middle of the, of the craziness by the comfort and the peace of God and that they can be too. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'm going to do that right now. Father, please give each one of us that are watching this now the message to bring to somebody else. Bring to, to mind a name of a person that is that we know is suffering in the middle of this, is, is fearful, is just locked up with anxiety. And tell us how we can, we can relate to them what we've learned, the good news we've learned about the way you've blessed us. We can relay that to them to help them. Give us that name. Send us on that mission. And use us well in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, you think about that. Have a great day. We'll talk tomorrow.